Where do you see as just being here a week? You went to the MSG rally. Very curious where you see it. I, look, I think it's fascinating. It's, it's electrifying, right? The whole world is watching this election. Uh, I remember a period about five months ago when everyone feared it might be the most boring race in history. Two old guys duking it out again. How wrong were we? We've had two assassination attempts. We've had Trump in a garbage truck, Trump in McDonald's, like you said. We've had Joe Biden getting assassinated uh, politically by his own party and replaced by Kamala Harris and so on. And now it's like on a knife edge, isn't it? I mean, you look at all these swing states and really you can't call any of them with any great authority. You know, tonight there's an outlier poll about Iowa that shows maybe uh, Harris is up there. I don't believe that. It was 15 points, Trump was up. Yeah. And now it just had the Des Moines Register put her up. Put that do, doesn't seem right. And there's another poll in Iowa which has Trump heavily ahead. Look, my gut feeling, and I had this in 2016, and when I was saying it and writing it in 2016, people were laughing at me. But I kept saying, I'm getting a feeling that the Trump train is steaming to victory. I get that feeling again now. Uh, I've been in L.A., I've been in uh, New York. I'm getting a lot of people who did not vote Trump last time but who are prepared this time, even if they don't like him, they're prepared to vote for him this time to stop Kamala Harris becoming president. I, I'm going on my gut, right. and I'm feeling he could actually end up winning quite big. And Pierce, uh, you're... And I'm feeling the same way. And I'm not just going off of these polls, because, listen, polls are there to distract you, to influence you, to even give you a sense of normalcy or to make you feel like everything is going the way that you think that it's going to go. But what you have to understand is that every single vote counts every last one of them and i've been on the streets and i've been traveling everywhere and the world is watching the world is watching to see if to see if we're going to pick the person that is basically opening up the borders to let everybody here and i got a whole nother video that's coming to address that plus what we got going on in the millionaire morning show but the world is watching to see <clears throat> if we're going to actually elect the person that's going to be tough on borders, that can make sure that we uh, get tough on on proxy wars and, and get the economy back on track, or if we're just going to be the laughing stock of the world like we have been over the last three and a half years. My gut personally, from being in the streets, doing street interviews, having conversations with people and going back and forth, my gut is telling me, and I just think that I'm on the winning team, I could be wrong, but I doubt it. My gut is telling me that there is a wave of red that is going to sweep this country. And unless it's going to be stolen and I see what's happening at these ballot boxes and things like that, you are going to see people absolutely positively turn red. I even see um, people in Chicago just going crazy about this whole situation. But let's continue. You're not new to the Trump train. I mean, you guys have sparred together. You and yep. Trump, you've been friends for a while, but you also disagree to each other's face, which is relatively unique. But this is what you said to us a short time ago about what you thought, if Trump can come out and win, yeah. what it would mean. Watch. It is one of the great comebacks in political history. And I wrote a column for The Sun in London uh, this week likening it to when Sinatra was thrown to the wolves in the late 40s, thought his career was over, all done and dusted. And then, boom, he comes back from here to eternity. He wins an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. And his career becomes one of the most iconic in the history of American celebrity show business. Donald Trump is on the verge of pulling off a similar comeback. You're not backing up the comments. Well, I think the word Nostradamus should be used there, shouldn't it? Um, <laughs> I, look, I, I think uh, I, I would compare it, actually, to what happened with Tiger Woods in golf. Tiger Woods was finished. He was number 1,100 in the world. Everyone was writing him off. The golf world, the celebrity world. He was done, toast, finished, kaput. And what happened? Tiger Woods didn't get the memo. And he fought back and he won the Masters in 2019. Greatest comeback yeah. in the history of sport. If Trump pulls this off, and it is obviously incredibly close, but I think he, he will pull this off. And if he does, it is the greatest comeback in the history of politics. He becomes the Tiger Woods of, of politics. And it would be an extraordinary thing. We can remember, can't we? Start of 2022, it was over. You know, Ron DeSantis was surging away in the polls for the Republican nominee, and Trump was gone, done. Look at him now. It's incredible. He was by himself in Mar-a-Lago. And, now and you know what's so funny? I think that it could quite possibly make him one of the most famous people on the face of this earth. Bar none. If Trump pulls this off, and I truly believe that he is going to pull it off, and in the face of every single thing, that, think about this, man. This man had had multiple different assassination attempts on his life. Came within, 
centimeters of completely tearing his whole face off. Bullet pierces ear. That was just a few months ago. That wasn't even that long ago. They literally tried to kill this man. They had a man that was set up in the bushes on the golf course hundreds of yards away to try to take him out. Election interference of what's happening in New York and Georgia. They are trying every single thing that they can in order to get this man to make sure that they keep the establishment, the establishment. But boy, I'm telling you, not only is it going to be an epic draining of the swamp, but there is also going to be a celebration and that we are going back to the core of who we are and making sure that we put Americans first. And I think that Donald Trump is going to wind up being one of the most, if you ever been to a rally, I'll had the opportunity to meet him up and close in person. But if you've ever been to a rally and you see what the, what the sentiment on the ground is, how people feel about it, people are 100% built in and, and ready to rock out with this whole Trump campaign and, and vice versa. I see the Divine Nine and the AKAs and all of that. They didn't already tried to book all of the rooms up in Washington, D.C. on inauguration day. I think that they're going to be highly disappointed, but we're going to find out. Now he's got a better team around than ever before. Mm -hmm. The other question I had, the only you can answer, is what's the rest of the world think uh, about him as a leader? Because we keep hearing that the rest of the world didn't like him. But I talked to the president of Poland, loves the guy. No, it, and then I talked to Prime Minister Boris Johnson this mm -hmm. week. And I said, honestly, he's got a book out. He really likes you. You have the very similar accent. This is what he <laughs> said about Trump, Trump as a global leader that he saw. I had a good relationship with him. With and, Donald Trump? Yeah. And um, I, if people, you know, who are liberal friends of mine in the UK kind of freak out when I say this. But, I, you know, I enjoyed his company. No, actually, do you I, like him as a person or do you yes, like him as a leader? Yes, yes. Do you I, like him as a leader? I, so I'm here's a terrible, you know, I'm going to confess that I, I both, right? And um, I've always found him the model of kind of old world courtesy and charm. And he thinks the world needs a strong leader in America. I think a lot of people feel that. I think a lot of people think two things. One, that Trump, in his own blunt way, take NATO, for example. What did Trump do with NATO? He was misquoted as saying he wants to get rid of it. No, he didn't. He said, look, if America's going to pay the big lion's share of the costs of NATO, you will have to stump up and pay what you're supposed to be paying, and you're not. What's happening now? Have you noticed? Every other NATO country yeah. is now paying what they should have been paying. That is billions of dollars they wouldn't have been paying if Trump hadn't rattled the American sabre of power. And America does that because America, in the end, has to do most of the heavy lifting. So I think Trump has a blunt way of going about things, yes. Sometimes his rhetoric can be, you know, it can be controversial, it can be disappointing. If you like him, sometimes you groan and go, don't say that, Donald. But actually on the world stage, a lot of world leaders that I've talked to and interviewed, they have a respect for him. They do think he's a tough character. They do think he gets stuff done. And they do think this weird way he goes about dealing with people like Putin, like President Xi, like Kim Jong-un. You know, he, he brings them in, if you like. And I think it's quite an effective tactic. You get these dictators, these, these very controversial foreign leaders, Trump gets them in, he sits down with them, he treats them with respect, makes it quite tricky for them to pull stunts on his watch. And they didn't. Right. Uh, I also it's called diplomacy. That's what it's called. It's called diplomacy. And no one wants to be in these forever wars. The fact that Kamala Harris says that she continues to give checks over to Zelensky and... and has a you know interesting relationship. I'm, I'm sure it will be a great relationship when you're giving hundreds of billions of dollars over to Ukraine. But the fact that we're still in these forever wars and we're funding these wars, and Trump is like, listen, I can get this junk done in no time, and we can make sure that we make it make a deal and get it done. The art of the deal. Look, man, it, it's a very clear choice between the two, and I don't know if y'all really want to continue to vote on on things that you can control like using uh removing babies <laughs> as unwanted pregnancies as a form of contraception or if you want to actually get to the core and make sure that we can get to this get to this money again and stop getting bs and, and get back get back to this unprecedented piece but y'all let me know what y'all think inside of the comments make sure you tap into the patreon link is in the description also teach hanley 40 percent off your first order 20 percent off for life i love you i appreciate you i'm gonna highlight you later peace